Hello and welcome back. It's Puzzle Time with Sudoku Sleuth and today we're going to be playing Clues Are in the Drawer. And you've got Sleuth here that's staring at a junk drawer. I'm sure we've got, we've all got a junk drawer somewhere in our house. I don't think mine has ever been as busy as what is depicted here in this thumbnail. But right on top of that junk drawer though is clearly a map sort of with an X mark the stop, uh, the, uh, the spot type of clue. And uh, Sleuth was very lucky to have it there floating right on the top. Now, all of this will become very relevant as soon as I turn over and we take a look together at the rule set. Um, just one thing before I do so, though. So, if you sort of notice almost like a pattern for all of the videos I've recorded, what typically happens is I end up with relatively approachable puzzles during the weekday and then obviously hard puzzles during the weekend. And it just happens to be that willpower is one of the constructors that tends to create more approachable puzzles and all the other constructors tend to create more difficult ones. So there's always been that imbalance that I've not really particularly enjoyed where almost willpower doesn't have the opportunity to give us some of his best rated difficult puzzles just because nobody else is giving us easy ones. And uh, today is an opportunity to rectify that for sure because this is a two star difficulty rated puzzle from willpower and I'm really glad to actually be featuring one of his on the weekend. Uh, it's got, let me just take a quick look, 93% rating and it has the usual earmarks of a willpower special. Let's take a look at today's puzzle and the rule sets. So, clues are in the junk drawer by willpower. And we've got the following set of rules. So, normal Sudoku rules apply. So, that means place the digits 1 to 9 once each in every row, in every column every column, I can't even select a column, and every 3x3 three three box. Pretty standard. Then we have crop key pairs. So white dots are consecutive. This, for example, was, a, well, I'm going to pick a 1. This would have to be a 2 to make sure it's consecutive. If that was a 3, that could be 2 or 4 to make sure that the white crop key dots are consecutive. We also have white uh, black dots here. So if this clue here was a 2, they have to be in a two to one ratio. So that could be a one or a four. As long as one cell is double the other, you're absolutely fine. Now, not all possible dots are given. So that does mean that, for example, for this two, I could easily have a four in here and there's no black dot between them, even though they're in a two to one ratio. That two here, if it has a one just beneath it, is also fine. It doesn't require a white crop key dot. We've got Dutch whisper lines, so the red lines are Dutch whispers. That means that neighboring digits on the same line have to be four or more apart. So for example, if this was a four, to be four or more apart, this could be eight or nine. Now, one thing that's about Dutch whispers that is a little bit different than German is that you can have a five. So if that's a nine, five, can actually be on a Dutch whisper line and it can have one or nine next to it. So just watch out for that. If you're used to German whisper lines, don't make that assumption that they're always going low, high, low, high. That may not be true. What else do we have? We've got killer cages. So we've got, you know, the cages outline basically um, kind of the number of cells and they need to sum up to the top left clue. So if this was a two, this would have to be a five to make sure that on aggregate, these two cells add up to seven, these three cells add up to eight, 10, etc. Uh, we're still not done, three more clues to go. Killer cages, we've done little killer. So the diagonals or the arrows outside of the grid, they mark out diagonals and the value next to them outline what the diagonal must sum up to. So, for example, this arrow here is pointing towards this diagonal that I just earmarked, and therefore these five cells that are selected must add up to 34. Uh, same here, these five cells, and a much longer diagonal here, and they're all summing up to 34. Sorry, one moment, I just heard my dog complain about the fact that she's not on the bed. Give me a second. Sorry about that. You know, the way it works is our eldest dog, she likes to sleep on her own for a bit. And then usually in the morning around 5, 5.30 a.m., she comes into our bedroom and basically demands to be put onto the bed so she can continue for another nap. Very cute. 
Right, so we just covered the little killer clues. We've got between lines and then odd numbers and we're done. So, between lines. So numbers on the grain line in box seven, which is this line here, are between the numbers in the two circles at the endpoints. So whatever these cells are, these digits have to be between them. And it's not an inclusive between, mind you. So for example, if this was a one and this was a seven, I have to pick one, two, three, four digits between the digits one and seven. And one thing that I cannot do is include either of them. So two, four, five, six works. However, putting a, another one, of course, in the same box doesn't work. And it's also not in between these two digits. Lastly, we have odd numbers. Numbers on the gray highlighted circles in box one are odd. That's why I very deliberately used a three here. All of these circles have to be from the digits one, three, five, seven, and nine to make sure that there are odd numbers on these gray circles. So only thing left to say now is if you feel like you've got this and um, you wanna find the clue in the junk drawer and you can see there's so many clues but there's an X marks the spot very much in the center here. Um, Link will be in the description down below as usual for you to play along. And with that said, I'm gonna restart the clock, see how I get on. <clears throat> right, I can place a digit in under 10 seconds. You always know that you're off to a good start if you can do so. Um, just box three, all of these add up to 10. Five can never be inside a two cell 10 cage, otherwise you'd end up repeating the five to make sure they add up to 10. And obviously we've got four 10 clues, they add up to 40, and therefore the remaining digit in this box has to be a five. If you add up the digits one all the way through to nine, which is all the valid Sudoku digits, one plus two plus three plus four, you get to 45. Five. Now I think I'm tempted to stay in box three. And here is why. If you think about black Kropke dots for a second, the numbers five, seven, and nine can never be on a black Kropke dot. And notice so many of the cells are on black Kropke dots. You know, you can't have seven or nine on a black Kropke dot because if you double a seven, it's 14, half a nine, it's 4.5. None of them work. So we know that seven and nine in box three have to be on the right hand side. I really want to take this a step further. They can't both here, let me show you. They can't both be here because their pairs, the three and the one, can't possibly go on, on the black Kropke dot. So one of these, the seven nines, is in this pair of dominoes, and the other one is definitely in here, joint with a one three. The double of one and three would be two or six. The counterpart to add up to 10 for two or six would be four or eight. We can probably take this to its conclusion, two, four, eight. If it's an eight, this has to be four. If it's a four, this is two or eight. Then we have another seven or nine, and we have another one or three, and we'll be left with yeah, the two six. Is that correct? I'm fairly sure it is. Because if it's a three, it'll be six. If it's a one, it'll be two. So the only place for eight to go anywhere in this is in here. That's eight, that's four, that's two. That's gotta be the one, that's gotta be the nine. And then in here, I have three six, and in there I have, well, only place for a six to go now because of this four. Can't be this cell, it's gotta be here. Four, six, three, seven. Hopefully that was correct. I think that is entirely forced and I didn't need to look outside the grid at all to think about it. Sorry, outside the box. And I think the answer to that is also true. Let me show you another way of just verifying that. All of these are odd digits. So if you look in row one, I've already got three odd digits, four odd digits. This 10 cage had to be made up of evens. 
because if it's one nine or three seven, that would be three odd digits, another three odd digits, that would be six odd digits in row one, that doesn't work. Right. One, two, three, four, this looks, no, I've broken it. Yeah, I have broken it. Sorry, I'm so tempted to restart and try this again. Um, I th so this is definitely seven, nine. This is definitely one or three. This is definitely two or six. This is definitely four or eight. Yeah, of course, of course, seven and nine. Because I had one, three, two, six in here. So the eight could have been on this side. Now, the conclusion is still sound, by the way in that there has to be even numbers in here. It's just if I put, yeah, so one and three are definitely in there. Now the problem is if I put a six in here, how am I going to end up with four consecutive digits in column eight? And the answer for that would be impossible because seven, eight, nine, which is the maximum I can have consecutive if there is a six up here, is only three digits. And then the gap between three and six it's only two digits with four and five. So a long way of saying that this cannot be a one, three, two, you know, from my options of one, three, two, six, this has to be one, two, three, and the six has to be in here. Yeah, I'm happier with that, which means that this is the three, this is the seven. Up here now, we have one and two, and on the side, we have eight and nine. Now, remember that conclusion that I jumped to to verify. Row one, I've already got three odd digits, four odd digits. This has to be even, and therefore this is two, this is eight, this is nine, this is one. And now I can definitely use this series of clues in column seven. So we're good now. Right. Where do we go from here? It's a really good question. I'm not going to pencil mark this because you, know, you could start at four from either end. I could start at five from either end. I could start at six from either end. Um, and obviously the reverse would be, you know, the nine, six, seven, eight, nine. So, you know, this will just end up being a series of almost all the remaining numbers. And I guess hence the junk drawer, you've got so many clues. You're not entirely sure how to get to X marks the spot really. Okay, let's, so I'm sort of dismissing this right-hand side of columns. I'm thinking about this left-hand side now. I'm sure we'll be back, by the way. But an eight in three cells has to have a one. And yeah, here, let me, let me show you what I'm thinking. These are six, seven, eight, nine. And you're going to say, Sleuth, how come? Well, without the 1, the 7 is either 2, 5 or 3, 4. The irony, though, is that with a 1 inside the 8 clue, well, it's going to be joined with either 2, 5 or 3, 4 to make up 8. So essentially, between the 8 cage and the 7 cage, I've basically used the digits 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, leaving 4 cells that are 6, 7, 8 and 9. How does that help? I'm really not sure it does, but how does it help? Box one, incredibly, that is not a five. And the reason it isn't, so, you know, options for the cell is three, five, seven. We know it's an odd digit and we know it's not one or nine. But five is not allowed on here. And the reason is we've got one, two, three, four clues. No, five is allowed. I could place one and nine beneath it. And that would be the fifth odd digit. Ignore what I was about to say. It was incorrect. Right, so this is three, five, or seven. Yeah, 
and these are a ton of options not five but they're basically all the remaining cells that's not one that one could be two three could be two so two is a solid option four is not available and then six and eight yeah i'm not sure i'm really helping myself here hmm Right, five doesn't belong here. And this time my conclusion is correct. You see, if I put a five anywhere on this line, let's say I put it at the end in here, the neighbor would have to be one or nine. It's the only digits that are four or more away to be neighbors on the Dutch whisper line. Now take a look at the number of odd digits we now have in box one. One too many. So that's six of them. So five cannot be on this bottom section. Five can be here. Presumably, yes, five can be there. So five is restricted to one of two cells. So here is kind of where I'm jumping to next, the in-between cells. So this is one, two, three, four, five, six. They don't even have to be consecutive, but mind you, there is those white crop key dots. So essentially, the question I have now, is this the low digit or is it the high digit? And I'm not, I think the fact that we've got a, real, a run of three, let me think about this, nine, eight, seven, six, five, and then that would be the minimum I can make this cell is five, four, and three, because of the white crocky dots. And then I break the eight cage, because this is made up of one with two, five, or one and three, four. And I think whichever one of these I pick, there is no way I can have three digits that are relatively low, that somehow slot in between these gaps, given they are they have to be consecutive. So I think what I'm saying is this is the low side, this is the high side, and it can't even be as high as nine. It has to be a maximum of eight because we've got seven and nine. Now it's not these are the minimums and maximums. Of course, there are digits that are closer together, but they're no closer than well, that would be two, that would be seven. And then these would be, let's say, three, four. So there's only three degrees of freedom. Three, two degrees of freedom, because there's another two digits I could place. So this can go up to three. This can come down to six. And this has to be one larger. This has to be one smaller. So five, six. And then we have a bunch of digits in here. And this one has to be one bigger with seven, eight, and nine. So there has to be a six, there has to be a seven. Not that it matters for the eight cage, but good to know. And that means no seven up here. Still trying to make sense of it all. It's not an easy puzzle for sure. Is it time? I mean, it's just these clues don't seem to be immensely helpful. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to color them. So as I start to add some numbers, I remember to go back and check them. I'm deliberately picking something that is you know, not red or blue, so it's not got the usual association with Dutch whisper lines or German whisper lines. So this 34 clue, I've already got 12, 24 between these. I mean, there's so much room. 
me to do a bunch of things. This is starting to look a bit tough. The reason I say it's starting to look a bit tough is I've got seven, eight, and nine in here. The maximum I can place is six. Now, six and six is 12. If I pick the two, that'll be 14, and then I'm left with 20 in the remaining two cells, which is impossible. So I'm fairly sure this has to be an eight. And even then, it's not exactly, you know, walk in the park. Because this is still adding up to 20, and I need 14 in two cells. So it still requires a bunch of fairly high digits. So this 34 clue is probably next. And I've ignored that 12 clue for quite some time, so I probably should think about it. So the reason I sort of haven't really picked X marks the spot is, you know, the first thing that I wanted to think about is what is that center digit? However, that center digit has four neighbors that are four or more away, which isn't actually that many digits. But it doesn't have to be a high digit. I could do one and five, six. That actually surprisingly works. The other options, so I think two would be too big because two would require six and seven next to it, which would definitely break the 12 gauge. So the other options that I have have to be high digits and high enough that they can actually have four neighbors, which I think the minimum would be eight, since it can have one, two, three, and four. If that's an eight though, this would be one or three. The other option of course would be nine and that would be one or two. Strangely, there's always a one. It's either in the center or it's in the one, three or one, two pair. So that's not a one. Ooh, I think I'm onto something. Yeah, I am onto something. Um, this, so I am going to pencil mark this, you know, goes against all of my instinct, but we know that this is limited to one, two, three, four, or five, not even a one anymore. We've proven it's not. Now take a look at all of the clues that I've pencil marked and then ask your question, where does seven, eight, and nine go? Well, we know it doesn't go inside this purple cell because look at the rest of the column. So one of these two is a seven, one of them is eight and nine, and the third one, because I need a third one, has to be in the middle. There's no other place for it in row five. So it's a long way of saying that's not a one, therefore that's not five or six, that's not five or six, that's a high digit with two low digits. These are from two, three, four, and five, not this one, not before either. Uh, of course, I could have 9 with 1 and 2, and therefore I have the option of adding a 5 around it. Now, if you take a look at the rest of this, yeah, this is why the white Kropke dot is helpful. So in here, I've got essentially 6, 7, 8, and 9. And the only place I can place a 6, well, okay, it doesn't matter actually. Um, it's not that the only place I can place a 6, although I think 6 in here would break this white Kropke dot run. Um, I don't really need to prove that because I have six, seven, eight, and nine. I need three of them in here. Seven, eight, and nine means this has to be a six. That was the min minimum, if you remember, when we looked at that 34 uh, little killer clue. Then I have a seven, then an eight, and nine. All right, here's where the white crop dots will be helpful. So the minimum I said I could be is four, five, six, and seven. Now, equally, the maximum that I can be was six, seven, eight, and nine. And obviously there's the option between in the middle, which is five, six, seven, eight. Now notice in this run, I always use the six, I always use the seven. Um, I don't have to use the eight or nine, they're the two digits, I think better illustrated with a number line actually. Four, no, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I have to pick four consecutive digits Whichever four consecutive digits I pick will always include the six and seven. Long way of saying that the seven is, the six and the seven is somewhere in this run. That can't be a seven. That is eight or nine. That's the seven. 
And because this is now 8 or 9, one thing I can't do is start this on 6 anymore. In fact, that 6 and 7 are up here. I think it's probably giving me direction on this white croppy dot. So 4, 5, 6, 7 would work. No, it doesn't. I meant to say, hang on. So if 4, 5, 6, 7 doesn't work, would 5, 6, 7, 8? Yes, with a 9. So that does work. But then there is no other kind of vertically ascending run that would work. The other options would be 4, 5, 6, 7. And presumably, yes, 5, 6, 7, and 8. So that's the full pencil mark now. That's an 8, 9. That works. And then some other leftover cell. Some other leftover cell that is actually quite big, if you remember. These add up to 20. I still need two clues that add up to 14. And because they're in different boxes, one of the options was a double seven, but not anymore with this seven placed. And in fact, because this is six and seven, I'm fairly sure that the remaining options to add up to 14 are eight and nine in here, and then five or six in there. And it's not a five, it is in fact a six, an eight, an eight, a nine. And then we're left with a run of and the direction is force four, five, six, seven. And then the seven is not here. The six is not there. Only place now left for a six, because remember it had to be in this white crop key. One, two, three, four, five, yeah, six. And then of course, three, four, five, six doesn't work anymore because of the seven. So that is the six, that is the seven, that is the eight is not enough to actually help me with my 3-9 clue at the top. Right, these are 1, 2, 3, 5. Fives are not on this side. You know, the orange little killer clue is starting to look a little bit restricted, isn't it? That 9 gives me an 8, which gives me a 1-3 pair which also gives me a 2-4 pair. Uh, the only four neighbors that are allowed next to the 8 is 1, 2, 3, and 4, so the degree of freedom that we had with the 5 is gone. And the fact that this has to be 1, 3 forces these to be 2, 4. 1, 3 finally gives me my 7 clue. That is not 3, 4, that is 2, 5. This is now 1, 3, 4. And the only place for that is not 1 or 3, given we've got a pair in here, that's a 4. That's not a four. This is one or three. That gives me a nine all the way up there. These are not nine. In fact, I know what these two cells are, and I know one of them has to be the five. And we've said before that can't be the five because, well, that would be the one, and then suddenly I'm stuck. So that is the five, and then one more digit left. That's a two, which gives me kind of the polarity. Because, oh, yeah, it does. It's because the five is placed. So that's not a five. Therefore, this is high, this has to be low, that is the 3. That's a 1-7 pair now. That's not an 8. Uh, it can still be 1 or 7 with 2 or 6, so we don't know. That 3 has to be next to an 8 or 9, it's not a 9, that is an 8. And then the 8 could be next to another low digit, which is 1 or 4. And 1 or 4, actually 2 here gives me the 6, the 7, this is the 1, and then this is the 4. Wow. Not one or three. That is a two, and therefore this is a three. And these are actually forced with four and five, and this is one or nine. That one gives me the order. That's nine. That's one. These now, actually, these are not eight or nine, and these are not six or seven. Uh, that four, five, two, five, yes, it is resolved. That is a five. That's a four. That is a two. That is a five. That 4 carries on, that 2, that 4, that 2 gives me, well, not quite, one 3 pair does though, that's a 5, that's not 5. We have a 2 in between these two cells and that is a triplet with 1, 2, 3, that 8 continues, that's 9, that's 8. So we have a 6, 7 and a 9 in here. 
And then up there we have a 6, 7 and a 5. Neither of which are resolved as far as I could tell. Right, the orange clue surely is at a point now where it's forced. Yeah, I mean, we've used pretty much everything else except for the little killer clues. So I'm sort of hoping we'll get somewhere with these. So let's think about this one, which is almost done. So this is 11, 13, and 12, 25. And then between these three cells, I have nine more to get to 34. And this cell can't be that big because of the eight and nine. So my options are, There's quite a few options. Let me see if I can just restrict it. So, I mean, it, it's, like I said, it's quite a few options. It's two, three, four, not five, six or seven. I'm fairly sure two is too small. Two, even with a double three, wouldn't work. Three, however, does. I could have a double three in there. So, and then seven works with a double one. So these are the old, all the options. Let me see if I can just do better. Yes, I can. That's two. That's seven. Come on. Three and four. Nope, not resolved. And then these are one, five, and nine. Did I say I can do better and then just didn't? Yeah, it really doesn't look like I can do better here. What about this clue? Maybe. How about just some classic Sudoku? Let's just see what I can do with that. Such as the eights, that must be very tempting. So eights is in one of two cells. Eights here is one of two cells. Not enough. I need some more clues in the middle. How am I not getting any? Seven. Yeah, one of two again. Two. Two looks helpful. Two. Two. No. Am I missing something? Usually the answer to that question is yes, but I'm not sure I am. All of the even digits in column five are done, so all of the remaining numbers in here are odd. And they are from one, three, in fact, yeah. one, nine, five, and seven, and this cell has to be odd. That is a very tough find. That's a three. A three has gone from here, so we know at least it's not a double three. And therefore it has to include uh, no, I can do two and three. I could do three with a two, so the four still works. These are still odd, though. So three, seven means this is one, five, or nine. That's the five, so this is one or nine, because it's also not three or seven. Right, it's starting to look a lot more restricted for yellow, so let's just have a think about this now. Ten meaning there's 24 left between these. I imagine a one in here is impossible. Yeah, because that would leave 23 between two cells. That doesn't work. That's a nine. These are not nines. That's a one five pair. 17, 19. This needs to be 15. This six, seven would require an eight or nine. It's not a nine. That's the eight, which would require a seven, a six. That helps. This is six nine. This is five seven. Hasn't actually removed any options here. Amazing. Um, only place for a six. No, that's not true. Six is in one of two places. So two. Six, where does four go? Four is also fair and could be anywhere. So 
these are fairly restricted with the one five. I haven't really thought about the rest of the columns or the rows. So let's see if I can restrict things a bit, just a tiny bit. Yes, sevens, sixes are restricted to these two cells. So this is a six, seven pair. Now, this is the only place left for a two based on my pencil marking and I should trust it. And therefore, this is another four. That's the only place that's left for the four. That's a one five pair. Six and seven in here. Remember, one of the options I had was three and two. I guess I could do two and one now with a six. So it doesn't actually <laughs> eliminate any option as far as I could tell. The four will give me though a three, a four. Yeah, it gives me a one, a three. The one isn't enough. Yeah, that's sticky. That's also sticky. Uh, that's not the eight. That's the eight. I may as well look at the rows. Yes, it does. That's one. That's five. That was, hang on. Is that solved a long time ago? Sleuth, sleuth. Come on, sleuth. Five, seven, nines. No, it's the same pattern again. Oh, yeah, surely what breaks it now? Yes. Um, because I was just looking at this and I'm thinking, well, the pairs are exactly the same. How am I breaking this deadly pattern? And the answer, of course, is the little killer clue. I've placed a one in here. So this has to be either a one or a two, depending on whether this is six or seven. So as soon as I figure out which one it is, the rest will come together fairly quickly. Right. I need an eight. That's the only place for it. Only thing that's left in this... Um, row is a three. That's not a three. That is a three. Doesn't help me with my one, two. I must have made a mistake somewhere. What am I missing? Oh, three, one, three. No, no, not enough still. We need in here two and four. Four here gives me four, gives me two. That's my break. That's a double one. That's a seven. That's a five, that's a seven, that's a six, that's a nine, five, five, nine, six. And then I need a one, which is in here. And then if I've not made any more mistakes, that's a nine for the finish. And that's a highly enjoyable 30 minutes willpower. Um, you know, not, there's... I'm just looking at my time because I'm thinking some of the other two and even three star difficulty rated puzzles I've solved quicker. And I'm not sure it's necessarily I had a clumsy solve. You know, some of the other ones required more deductions, which is maybe why they had the higher rating. But this one was very much the clues are in the junk drawer and it's sort of constantly forcing you to assess what is the next step. And I think that's the source of the difficulty. They're all logical deductions sort of i mean seeing the one the six seven eight nine seeing that this forces this to be the low and high seeing the five is not on there so yeah they're, they're also tough deductions so let's be fair well i hope that you guys enjoyed the puzzle and the video a um, little bit quirky at times but a largely clean solve and um I guess, um, what am I going to recommend to you next? Tough one. In between lines, kind of don't get enough souls and attention. So there's certainly a playlist of them, and I'm going to recommend that to you next. Hope that you enjoyed the video. Bye-bye for now. Mm -hmm.